days we see we should probably have been praying this for our children from the day they were born. That's because no matter how good a parent you have been, your children can still be impacted by the dark side of today's culture. The endless barrage of evil influences in the world present a constant battle for our adult children, especially even good kids from good families are being enticed into destructive things. We have to continually pray that they will be strong enough to resist this unrelenting encroachment of the enemy into their lives. Without prayer, these things don't just happen. We can't assume that no weapon formed against us will ever prosper because believe me, it will. God's promises don't automatically happen without us doing our part. If we are not praying, the enemy is waiting to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus knew that Satan was attacking Simon Peter, and so he prayed for Peter to have the faith to withstand it. He said to Simon Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. That's from Luke twenty-two thirty-one. Jesus could have said, Satan, be gone and have been done with it, but he recognized that having faith and being able to resist was part of Peter's responsibility. If Jesus had to pray that his own disciples' faith would not fail in the midst of Satan's attack, how much more do we need to pray that our adult children's faith will not fail when the enemy comes to tempt them away from all God has for them? Jesus instructed his disciples to pray that you may not enter into temptation, Luke 22, 40. We must instruct our adult children in the same way. We must pray that they have strong faith, to pray and resist whatever the enemy throws at them. Evil influences can confront even the most committed believer. Jesus prayed for his disciples to be protected from the enemy. He said to his heavenly Father, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. John 17:15. The disciples had walked with Jesus for three years and had seen his miracles and heard his preaching and teaching from the word of God about the Father's kingdom. And yet they still needed to be prayed for in order to be protected from the enemy. Jesus did not say to his disciples, I taught you the best I could, but you're on your own now, so good luck. No, he prayed, keep them from the evil one. We parents must do no less. We must pray, God, protect my children from the evil of this world. When evil penetrates your adult child's life and bad things happen through no fault of their own because they've been living God's way, you can trust that God will bless them in it. The story of Joseph is the perfect example of that. His story of evil happening to you is about as bad as it gets. But God totally redeemed his situation. Because of the jealousy and evil in his brother's hearts, they sold Joseph into slavery, and he was taken to Egypt. But because Joseph was godly and faithful, God worked in all the evil that came against him. The Lord was with Joseph and made all that he did to prosper. This story is found in Genesis 39, and it is well worth reading. But again, Joseph was victimized because of another person's evil, and he was thrown in prison. 
But whenever evil came against Joseph, he refused to compromise God's laws. And so the Lord was with him in everything he did. God not only turned things around for Joseph, but he eventually elevated him to second in command over all of Egypt. He ended up completely forgiving his brothers and saving his own family from disaster. He said to the brothers, who were very repentant for what they had done, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Genesis 50, 20. It wasn't God's will to see Joseph put into slavery, falsely accused and jailed, but God worked through the situation to prosper him and eventually to position him to do the thing for which he was created, which was saving his people from disaster. If your adult child is enduring an undeserved punishment or hardship of some kind because of the evil or sin of others, pray that he will not turn against the Lord, but will instead draw closer to him and be able to praise him in the situation. Pray that he will stand strong in the ways of the Lord so that God will prosper and bless him. God works powerfully in the midst of an obedient and grateful heart to turn things around and do a miracle. Ask God to work through your adult child's difficult situation and use the evil done against him for good. Most of all, pray for your adult child to always do the right thing, no matter how unfair life seems. If your adult child is paying a deep price right now for someone else's sin and evil, know that in the Bible, God's people found grace in the wilderness. It says that in Jeremiah 31 too. Pray that your adult child will not only survive the unfair consequences, but while going through it, she will also find God's grace, even in a terrible situation. Jesus was innocent, and he prayed to not have to go through what was ahead of him. But he also prayed God's will would be done and not his own. When he surrendered his will to his heavenly Father, then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. Strength came from heaven to get him through what he was facing. Ask God to send strength from heaven to help your adult children get through what they are facing. On the other hand, if your adult child is having to face some stiff consequences for not resisting evil influences and destructive behavior, Pray that he will learn a needed lesson without being destroyed. Pray that no matter what it is he has to face as a result of his actions, that God will strengthen him to get through it. Pray that he will be repentant and surrender to the will of God completely. God rewards a humble, repentant, submissive, dependent heart. No matter what happens, your adult child has a future of purpose that is well worth praying fervently about now. Adam and Eve's first child was Cain and the second was Abel. God was not happy with what Cain offered to him as a sacrifice because it was clearly an act of disobedience. Cain was angry about that, but God said to him, why are you angry? If you do the right thing, you will find favor with me. But if you don't do the right thing, sin is waiting to own you. But you should rule over it. That's from Genesis 4, 6. God gave Cain a choice. He could choose to do the right thing and rule over sin and therefore please God. Or he could choose not to do the right thing and allow his own jealousy and anger and revenge to rule over him. He chose the latter. He killed his brother, Abel, in a jealous rage. When God asked Cain what happened to his brother, Cain lied and said he didn't know. Lying to God is not a good idea, especially since God always knows the truth. The only thing God wants to know when he asks a question is how that person chooses to answer. 
Too bad Cain didn't figure that out. After Cain lied, God told him from that point on he would be cursed as a fugitive. But even then, God in his mercy would not allow anyone to destroy Cain. Instead, God allowed Cain, an adult child who murdered his own brother, to still go on to have a family with children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. God punished him, but he didn't give up on Cain completely. There were still many blessings in his life, even after his terrible sin. We can't give up on our adult children either, no matter what they've done. We certainly don't have to condone or excuse their actions or enable them to continue in their sins or cover up for them so they don't suffer any consequences. But we should not give up praying for them. We must continue to believe in the potential God has put in them, even if we can't see it at the moment. Pray for a humble, repentant, and teachable spirit in your adult child. King David did so many things wrong. He committed adultery and murder. He lied and made terrible errors in judgment, and he could not manage his own home and children. Still, God said of David that he was a man after my own heart who will do all my will. Acts 13.22 Obviously, the Lord looks at the heart. It wasn't that David never did anything wrong or never made a mistake. It was that he was quick to humble himself before God and repent. And because he had a teachable spirit, he learned from all of his mistakes and poor judgment. And he changed his ways. He paid a price for each sin. Yet he did not reject the correction of the Lord. These stories prove that the love and grace of God are there for our adult children, no matter what they've done, to bring redemption and restoration. And that is how we should pray, for a repentant heart and a transformation in our adult child's life. And we should thank God for his grace, which gives us more than we deserve. In my book, The Power of Praying for Your Adult Children, I give many ways to pray for your adult child, to resist evil influences, along with the scripture to back it up. Two of those ways are pray that your adult child's heart will be filled with wisdom and knowledge, and also pray that your adult child's trials will turn them to God. If you have adult children who have been captured by evil influences and destructive behavior and they keep relapsing back into it once they are set free, refuse to give up and stop praying. Over and over the Bible talks about how God delivered his people from the enemy. Refuse to feel like you are losing the battle. God can deliver us and he promises to continue to deliver us. And that includes your adult children. Sometimes it may seem that the more you pray, the worse it gets. But you can't back down. If the enemy has turned up the intensity, you need to turn up the fervency. Often the battle becomes more intense the closer you get to victory. Just as a mother forgets about the pain of childbirth the moment she sees her newborn baby, when you're about to give birth to victory, you have to push through the pain and keep praying until you see the birth of answered prayer. God does not want you to be imprisoned by a discouragement, but rather to be a prisoner of hope. Instead of being chained to sadness and fear and hopelessness or dread, let hope in the Lord feed your faith. Determine to walk by faith and not by sight. Take the dream in your heart that you have for your adult child and declare that the victory you see for him or her has already been won in the name of Jesus. Above all, do not allow the enemy to make you feel that you are disqualified from the powerful intercession for your adult children because of mistakes you may have made in the past. Whatever you neglected to do or couldn't do because of human frailties or inabilities or limitations or overwhelming burdens when you, you were raising your children, 
there's a promise that God will more than compensate for that by the flow of his spirit of grace and power moving into their lives. You have the authority to call upon the deliverer on behalf of your adult children so that they can find the deliverance they need. Don't forget that. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's from Romans 8, 37. Ask the Lord to show himself strong on behalf of you and your adult children today. We all make mistakes as parents, so let's get those memories out of our hearts and minds by going before the Lord and asking him to reveal anything that needs to be put under the cross and submitted to the delivering power of the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, show me if I have failed to discipline my children when they were younger and this has encouraged rebelliousness or caused them to not understand the consequences of sin now, if you see places where you have overindulged your child or failed to discipline when you should have, don't let the enemy win this. Confess it before God. Your prayers can not only keep the enemy from gaining any more ground in their lives now, but they can push him back completely. Just remember that your battle is with the enemy and not with your adult children. And the Holy Spirit in you is more powerful than the enemy's influence in them. There is nothing too hard for God. This promise says, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work shall be rewarded, says the Lord, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. There is hope in your future, says the Lord, that your children shall come back to their own border says that in Jeremiah 31, 16. This is a great promise for parents of adult children who have strayed off the path God has for their lives. You may not know exactly what the path is that God has for them, but you do know if the one they are walking on now is not it. This is a message of hope for your adult children too. For no matter how far the enemy has taken them from the life that they were meant to live, they will come back from the land of the enemy to their own border. But you must pray. Trust your instincts when it comes to your adult children. This is not a license to be suspicious of them all the time, but you should be suspicious of the enemy at all times. If you sense something is not right with your adult children or something troubles you in your soul regarding them, trust that instinct. God gives parents special holy antenna that can pick up evil a mile away. Start praying immediately for God to reveal everything and expose any sin so that repentance, deliverance, and healing can begin. You've got the power. The enemy has only lies. Pray that all truth will come to light. Pray with me about this now. Lord, I pray that you will give my adult children the discernment they need to understand the clear choice between good and evil and right and wrong, between what is life-giving and life-destroying, and between a path into a good and secure future and a dead-end street. I pray that they will not allow the world to shape them, but instead that they will be shaped by you. I know that the influence of the enemy can come in so subtly as to be nearly unobserved until it's too late. But I pray that with Holy Spirit-given wisdom and discernment, they can be prepared for the enemy and anticipate his plans. Give me wisdom to know how to pray for each of my adult children. I realize that I don't know everything going on in the minds of my adult children, but you do. Reveal what needs to be revealed. Don't allow them to get away with anything. Keep them away from people who intend to involve them in evil works. Keep them from falling into temptation. Strengthen them to resist all evil influences and avoid all destructive behavior. In Jesus' name I pray, 
You know, we can all become discouraged when we feel we may be losing the battle, but determined to lift up praise to God for His miracle working power and thank Him that He is the God of the impossible. Thank Him that He is far greater than any evil influence your adult child is facing.